that's not bad. Three types of axes that I really like to use. All three of these are by a maker called Grand Forest Brook. They're made in Sweden. The price point, it's not a cheap axe and it's not the most expensive axe you could find. It's right there in the higher end of the middle and these are phenomenal axes. First, we'll talk about the Small Forest Axe. This is one of the best axes. This axe threads the line between hatchet and axe. It's 19 inches long, that sweet spot where you can use this as a one-handed axe safely or a two-handed axe if you'd like. It has a one and a half pound head on it. It's an excellent axe for felling and limbing and does really decent at splitting as well, even though it's not a splitting head. You can see on it, I have my own strike guard. So if I'm splitting with this axe and I'm chopping down and I happen to miss, this hard piece of leather will protect it. Upgraded my axe mask on it to one of the Bear Essentials axe masks for this. And you could open it up. The nice thing is there is a 400, 800 grit sharpener on it. And it just slides in that spot there. One of the other reasons I wanted to make my own axe mask for this was because the welt was something I wasn't satisfied with, with the original Grands Forest Brook leather. So I have a really thick welt on this so it'll keep your blade nice and sharp. Checking out the axe head itself, it's got a pretty traditional design. The whole thing, including handle, I believe weighs two pounds but the head at 1.5 is just the perfect size to take with you into the backcountry. It's not too heavy and it gets the job done. Now, if we look at the profile, you can see it's definitely a cutting ax designed to chip away on trees. It's not an ax designed to split. That being said, it does split fairly well. What you'll see on this ax is a wedge forming starting right here and it slowly goes down to a point. So it's mostly designed for felling and limbing and chipping away at trees. Also the way it's hung, I've never had an axe head come loose even a little bit. This is definitely my favorite all around axe. And it goes really well on your hip. Here I have my pack pouch and you could just slide the axe head into there and it just sits right on your hip and it's not too long. It's the perfect size. Secondly, we have the Grands Forest Brook Scandinavian Forest Axe. It's very similar to the Small Forest Axe, except it's 25 inches in length, and it's got a two pound head instead of a one pound head on it. The whole weight of the axe is 2.6 pounds, and as you can see, I've got a very used up strike collar and one of the older axe masks that I've prototyped for quite a while now, and it's held up really well. And now I'll just compare with you the Small Forest Axe and the Scandinavian Forest Axe and it's basically the exact same except the Scandinavian is larger. Now looking at the profile of the Scandinavian, you can see that it wedges a little bit sooner than the small forest axe. So that means that this part will bite into the wood and then from here on it'll start splitting. So this one should be a tiny bit better at splitting for the head shape alone, even though it is very, very similar. But the other thing that'll make it better at splitting is the extra length because of the extra power you could get out of this longer handle. So this ax is great for felling, limbing, and it's decent at splitting. All in all, this is a fantastic ax. If you don't mind the weight of it, then it's amazing to take in the backcountry. And again, this one too will fit in your hip pouch. And it is a little bit longer, but very doable. And lastly, we have the Grands Force Brook Small Splitting Axe. I haven't yet developed a mask for this one, but I'm doing that next. But here you get a glimpse of the one that comes standard with the axe, which is a great mask. This one's got a pretty good welt inside. It's just a very simple axe mask. So the Small Splitting Axe is 23 inches in length, and it's the sweet spot in between the 19 inch and the 25 inch. So this guy has a two pound head, but take into account that it has a metal strike collar here to protect from overstrikes. And that's really, really solid. Way better than leather, but the primary use on this is for splitting. Because of this metal collar and everything, even though it has a two pound head, the whole thing is about 3.5 pounds. So it is the heaviest of the bunch. Now, if we check out the profile of the ax, you can see that it's concave with a very thin tip up here which is really, really nice for biting into wood. You could definitely fell trees with this too, and it's probably decent at limbing as well. So it's a good all round ax, but this ax's bread and butter is for splitting. It's a straight wedge, so this will bite in and split very easily. And you'll notice the handle shape is different too. This one has a more straight hickory handle and halfway down it's got circular grooves and that's just for grip. The straight handle is really nice for splitting, 
because when you split, you just have the two hands there and come down straight. All in all, this thing is a beast for its size. It's a fantastic splitting ax and I really, really enjoy it. And for the size, you can also fit it on your hip and it's perfect. The real reason I got the splitting ax is because I usually camp with a bunch of my friends and we all have the small forest ax. So on any given trip, there's three or four of us all bringing the same ax. Now, if one of you brings just the splitting ax, my gosh, you've got a really good thing going for you. So it's good to diversify in a group. Generally, it's just a matter of weight. If you're doing a ton of portages and you just want something all around, the small forest ax is for you. If you're not doing that many portages, you're felling some standing deadwood and you plan to have some pretty big fires, then the Scandi might be for you. And if you plan on doing a lot of splitting or need to diversify in a group and you want to make that job easier, then the small splitting ax is definitely for you. Also, Grand's Forest Brook has a 20 year warranty on all their axes. Like I said, I have never had an issue and I don't really know of anyone that's had an issue. I'm sure there are people, but they are just such a good company and they make amazing axes. The one downfall is they're hard to get, but this is the type of tool that you buy once and you have it for the rest of your life. And I love those values and that's exactly what I like to represent at Bear Essentials as well. I always keep the mask just in my pack pouch here just so I don't lose it. I always end up putting that down and losing them. Okay, so we just got a piece of wood about just under the size of the axe head itself. It's a bit punky. This wood's definitely a little bit rotten. It's not great wood, but it should be easy to split with this. I stand with my legs apart like this, so if I miss, it goes right through. And that cut really nice. Okay, so we got a real piece of wood now. That's about an inch bigger than the ax head. And pretty hard, so let's give it a go. Cracked it pretty good. You see with a cheaper axe, when you hit the handle like that, eventually you do it over time and it'll loosen. But this Grand's Force has yet to do that to me. Here we go. So this little 19 inch ax can do really, really well on the right type of wood. Okay. <clears throat> Now let's try a larger stump that's three inches bigger than this. I don't know what this is. We'll see how well the small forest ax does. So one of the things with this, because it's not a wedge shape, it'll usually just bite in there. And see right here, that's saving the handle a bit because I struck in the middle of a large piece. The handle would have caught against the edge of this and it would have damaged it a little bit, but the strike collar might have saved it. On the strike collar, it's dented a bit, but it protected the actual handle. I'm sure I could get through this if I keep going. If it was a drier log, it'd be easier, but I'm just gonna stop it there and say that the efficiency of this thing is probably designed for logs that are smaller than this, maybe five, six inches in diameter at best. You can get through something like this, but it's just not meant for it. You're just gonna do a lot of swings. So let's switch over to the Scandi. Yeah, I'll just start with a medium sized log because it could obviously do the smaller one. Screw it, why don't I just finish this off with the Scandi? Just 25 inches rather than 19, so I should get an extra swing and there's a little bit more wedge. Okay, so that bit in a lot. And the ax strike collar really protected the handle on this one. There we go. So I just had to hit it here rather than here. And it went. So this Scandi is really, really strong. You could get quite the string, swing out of it. We're gonna try a very large log. So it's a decent amount bigger. 
uh, maybe nine inch or 10 inch, but this is a pretty sizable log for the back country. You won't really be splitting these that often, but let's see what this could do. You see when it's biting in this much, it means that the log is a bit moist. So these aren't perfect specimens, but it's okay. There we go. So it just took three to get through this. You can see the strike collar was necessary. It took some of the damage. This did really well. And honestly, you're not gonna go much bigger than those logs. And now let's try the beast, the small splitting ax. See what easy, easy it is to lose these? Okay, here's a medium sized log. And absolutely no problem. Okay, you got maybe a 10 inch log. They're never gonna be split in this black country, but if you could get through this, just imagine how easy it is through one of the smaller ones. It also doesn't get stuck as much because of that wedge shape. So even if you have a poor choice of log, it's nice. There we go. Cracked halfway through. And there it is. So, uh, this guy is an absolute unit for splitting. And for its size and weight, I think it's a really underrated ax. Okay, so now we're gonna go for our chop test. We'll start with our small forest ax. And just to let you know, this is a standing deadwood tree. It's completely dead, but it doesn't seem rotten yet, so a perfect specimen. Okay, pretty decent bite. Up V. It chips away pieces quite nicely. And that's the design of the head here, the profile. Cut deep and chip out pieces. So the slimmer the profile and the sharper the bit, the stickier it's gonna be when you slice into a tree, it, it might get stuck a little bit more. The more of a wedge it has, the less sticky it'll be. Uh, that being said, this one is really good for just chipping. That's what you're supposed to do. Chip out pieces. I'm gonna go just right below it. Awesome. You can see this chip goes in pretty good. I'll do one this way and one more this way. If we do one more chip here, you can see the depth. So you can see it's pretty much the same cut we're chipping in, but the Scandinavian forest axe went way deeper. And that's just strength. The head is almost exactly the same. And now we'll just check out the profile of the old splitter. Small splitting ax, head profile, that's a wedge. Now it does have a pretty sharp bit here. <laughs> it actually got pretty deep there. It's not bad. Because of the weight of this thing, it actually chops remarkably well. It's chipping out some pretty big pieces. I'm surprised. Let's chip out this side so you can see. As you get a little bit deeper in here, it's gonna be harder. It's not gonna flake off as many pieces, but this thing has surprising strength. If you don't mind the extra weight, this did really well. I'm very surprised. Wow, that might be a game changer alone for me. Huh. So anyways, there's the facts right there. You could definitely see the small forest axe as a less of an indent. The Scandi is pretty deep and nice chips. And the small splitting axe, that did some damage, surprisingly. I thought because of 
the wedge-shaped head, it wouldn't chip as well. But honestly, because of the force, the mass of this thing, and the wedge is not that severe. This is a great all-round axe. The place where this small splitting axe would probably not be as great is just limbing. Um, your accuracy with this is way less. I noticed even when I was swinging here, accuracy on side swings and such is way, way less just because of the weight of it and maybe the profile. So when you're splitting, the accuracy is really, really good. But when chopping down, it's not as good. And it's a pretty heavy little axe. It'll probably exhaust you a little bit more to use this and try to chop through logs, honestly. But it's good to know that this is a great and workable axe for felling as well. Now I'm gonna skip limbing just because limbing is pretty straightforward. And in general, all the axes are gonna be good. The accuracy on this one and the fact that it's a bit heavier is gonna be a slight disadvantage. The small forest axe is gonna be the best for it just because you could one hand on the other side of logs and the Scandinavian is right in the middle, so. Okay, everyone, so those are your three axes. You have your small forest axe, which is a great one-handed axe, as well as two-handed, and kind of an all-around great lightweight choice. You have your Scandinavian forest axe for a bigger, stronger all-around choice. And you have your small splitting axe, which surprisingly did way better than I thought in all categories. And so each of these axes has their own advantages and disadvantages. I love them all and I can't pick one or the other. Each one has a specific use on a specific type of trip. All right, hopefully this helps give you some information and maybe make a decision on getting an ax one day. I'm also in no way against any other brand of axes. Honestly, um, they're all gonna be great. These are just the ones I prefer and have had a lot of use with. And that's all I could really speak about. So thanks everyone for stopping by, take care. But eventually, if you want one of these axe masks and strike collars made, for your type of axe, um, just write in the comments below and let me know what type of axe you use. Uh, there's the old sharpener, so I'll just show you the four, the 400 grit is great if there's just a slight nick in it. And you could do two things, rotate just like a stone. And then when that's sharp, you switch to the 800 just for a fine tune. And this sharpener is great for knives as well. But the nice thing is it barely weighs anything and it's always with your axe. And you're always gonna bring an axe on a trip. So basically you always have a sharpener on a trip.